Uppity and Corny here. So I was listening to a panel on a channel that I've never heard of before. It's called Ant or Ant T. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'll try to find the link and place it down below. Um, my partner doesn't like for me to be on co-ed panels, and so um, that's a boundary of his that I respect, right? And also, he doesn't like for me to be on panels past um, nightfall. So when I say nightfall, I don't mean like sunset, but I mean like night. So it's 10 p.m., 11 p.m., and you're, you know, hanging out, you know, co-ed or with a bunch of dudes, like... It's a bad look, so I don't do it. I can't hit the link. I can encourage a girlfriend or two to hit the link, but me, myself, I can't do that because that's a boundary in my relationship, right? It's it's a bad look. So I've decided instead to make my own video response to what I was watching. So there is a woman on there who is quite the gaslighting liar who has, uh, as a non-African-American woman, as a woman who does not even identify as a black woman, as a woman who identifies as a biracial foreigner, right? A, a, in terms of, you know, like, we're American, this person is not. So she has made a career for herself on YouTube, criticizing the looks, personalities, behavior, and culture of African-American women. Now, she'll say that she doesn't, but in reality, if she says something that you can say well like if you go to her channel and say oh we're here here's the proof she'll simply delete the video so one of these videos was made about me and it was called diary of a mad black woman up at a unicorn and in that video she goes oh uppity is fake light-skinned and she's got fake saggy breast implants and i'm like 50 shades lighter than her and um let's say all of that is true just just let's just say all of that is true the problem that certain women are having with this woman is that she criticizes us so bad. Like, here's one of the things she says. Oh, well, I did say Uppity's boobs were saggy. Mine are perky, perfect, right? And so it's like, okay, well, if that's the juxtaposition, then prove it, show it, right? So you set, you set yourself up as a person who sits on high looking down at people who are inferior to them, criticizing their culture, their looks, their their behavior, their personality is fine. But then demonstrate the opposite if you're not a hypocrite. Demonstrate the opposite if you're not a hypocrite. I mean, so many people on YouTube really do have personality disorders to the point where they cannot respond to a straight line of questioning. They cannot answer questions unless they answer that question with a question. But here is what is like, here are the people I respect. Let's say goddess six footer. Let's say she said these things to me, which she never would. And I'll tell you why. Goddess six footer is a, that's an objectively beautiful woman. And when it comes to objectively beautiful women, you find that they don't initiate attacks on the beauty of other women. Every woman you have ever seen initiate attacks on the looks of other women. Think of them in, in your head right now. Either they're mediocre looking or they have terribly low self-esteem and a lot of anxiety, jealousy, and envy. Okay? Think about it. Think about it and then tell me if I'm right or wrong in the comments. I know that I'm right, but go ahead and let me know. Um, because pretty women are held to a certain standard and they learn that as pretty children where it's it's very hard to interact in a regular way. So there is almost like there's pretty privilege and there's also difficulties that come with being pretty. And one of them is that people will take it very hard if you if you make fun of them and you learn to keep that kind of thing to yourself. And also kids who aren't made fun of and they're told beautiful things about themselves that becomes part of their personality and they tend to treat other people that way as well. That's why you find a lot of women who are very beautiful are often very kind, right? Because, you know, world has been kind to them. Now, sure, there are beautiful women who have been assaulted, raped, molested, all these different things. And again, that's why I said there are the women who experience a lot of anxiety that comes from insecurity, jealousy, whatever. But in general, I wanted to set forth that example of the goddess six footer because you never hear her going in on the looks of any individual woman. However, if the goddess six footer set me down, right, and said, you know, 
well, this and this is what's going on with you now. Now, I am paired, so it's not like I would go to her or, you know, people she's associated with, like, you know, Kevin Samuels looking for a high-value man because I have one. However, let's say I was looking, and the goddess six foot has said to me, you know what, you've got to lose weight. You're way too close to my height to weigh what you do. Um, you've got acne, you need a good acne rub, go see a dermatologist, you know, get a beautician. I get that you're a natural, but your ends are all messed up. You got to keep that thing L like whatever, right? I would be able to take that from her as a person who is able to set an example, is a married woman and is also a beautiful woman who keeps herself up in an amazing way. I would yield to her. I would submit to her. I would thank her for her advice and for trying to set me on the right path. Someone like a Shira Star Goddess will tell you, honey, you need to drop 40 pounds. Honey, your skin color does not work with that color blonde or that red, that kind of red on your lips does not go for you. You need a deeper red. You need to try a crimson. That fire engine red is not for you. That is something Shira will do while demonstrating these things herself, Right? Shira might tell you you need to lose weight, but you can look at some of her older videos and see that she's taken her own advice and has lost weight. She might tell you your facial features are imbalanced, but she will also say, hey, I went and got lip injections because maybe she felt that, you know, her facial fe features were imbalanced and she did what she could to balance them in order to level up. Okay. And makeup is something that also helps us makeup, wigs, weave hairstyles, there are things that help you to balance your look. And when a look is balanced and more, uh, and there's more symmetry in it, there is more beauty. So the person on the panel uh, who people were disagreeing with likes to uh, feign a victim status saying, oh, you guys are just part of, you know, the same group and which is partially true. But a lot of these women who disagree with her, they disagree amongst themselves they have no allegiance to themselves. They're just, I mean, if if people who don't even know one another, who have no relationship with one another, are all telling you the same thing as if they've rehearsed it behind closed doors, it's it's worth listening to. But this is a person who hides behind avatars and filtered photos and says things like the things that she said about me, about, you know, oh, Uppity's got saggy boobs and the breast implants and oh, she's just fake light skinned and she's always sitting in front of a bright light or an open window with dramatic light pretending to be light skinned and I'm 50 shades lighter than her. Her boobs are saggy, mine are perky, perfect. It's like if you're going to talk to or or about a person like that, if you are going to bully and drag a person, because I had never said anything about this woman's looks. I had never at the point that she made this video, and it's something that she deleted. That's why she says, oh, go prove it. You can't prove it because the videos are deleted. Now, here's the deal. I'm not against deleting videos. I have deleted over 100 videos on my own channel that I don't think are good for my brand or that I felt like were too personal. I put certain videos on members only because there are things about me and my family that I feel like, you know, nobody should have access to those things who, who, for free, quite frankly. So I'm not against that, but it's the lying, it's the hypocrisy. It's the lying and the hypocrisy. And then to call other people hypocrites who have said, okay, well, if you're so superior, then cam up, prove it. This person's favorite word is show your proof, prove it. But when you say it back to that person, all of a sudden it has no meaning. And I'm just like, this is why I say that these are the traits of a personality disorder because some people cannot even, they, they can't communicate in a regular bra way because their brains are not set up with, with that kind of structure. They don't have the beaten paths, the wrinkles in their brains in order to com communicate in a way that is reciprocal or like a symbiotic or, you know, this for that, not tit for tat, but this for that. Like you ask me a yes or no question. I respond with a yes or no. You ask me an open-ended question and I respond with an open-ended answer as opposed to a yes or no. You ask me an open-ended question or you ask me a yes or no, uh, a true or false question. And I answer you with true or false, like you would on a standardized test, as opposed to answering that question with a question. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And this is why there's always a failure of communication with this person from the types of women that she criticizes. And of course, 
we we know what the deal is as African American women. We're not we're not stupid. Women women all over the world, especially African African women all over the world, have a lot to say about African American women. Um, I was just listening to something on TikTok where this African girl said an African American called her an African booty scratcher, and she's responded to that. Well, that's why you guys were chosen for slavery. And I said to the woman, you know, I was called an African booty scratcher too. Anyone darker than a brown paper bag got called that. But your comment about slavery, like you don't know what 400 years of Holocaust type hell that you're, that you're invoking when you say that. And all these Africans and Caribbeans in the comments, they were just like, oh, cry harder, get over it, you black B word, you know, it's funny. And I'm just like, you know, of, of, it would be to you because there is this... Um, there's this thing all around the world in the black diaspora or in the African diaspora where it's okay to attack African Americans and African American women in specific. And, you know, so many times in these public spaces, our men who are not our men like they belong to us, but when I say our, I mean as in belonging to the same ethnic group. So there are Jamaican men, there are, you know, whatever type of Caribbean men, you can name a group, Muslim men, Christian men, other African American men, if they are flattered or fancied, um, if they fancy the woman from the opposite culture, they will yield to that woman as opposed to defend the woman who belongs to their same culture. And African American women so many times end up alone as targets to be taken down. And so to listen to someone gaslight you about that and literally try to change the reality of what they've built their career on, which is the bashing of African-American women, it's just like, it's not worth engaging with those people, but it is worth listening to people like me saying hi before I knew this woman, before I had anything to do with this woman, before I ever got into it with her, before I, I said anything about her be, being just an avatar. It was like, oh, up to unicorn has saggy boobs and they are breast implants. And I'm just like, you know, I, I'm spilling out of a double G. Like I've put on weight since I was on YouTube. You can see certain photos of me when I started as a YouTuber versus now and I'll lose the weight. But like um, I went from an E to a double G in this amount of time and you're not going to have breasts the size of a double G. You're not going to have G size, E size, E, e sized or even triple D sized boobs that are perky. They may not be saggy, but they're not going to be perky. There's weight to them. Weight, gravity, it's a thing. You, we live on Earth. The, this is not the moon, right? We're not on Saturn's, Saturn's ring. It's not an asteroid. It's not a space station. There's gravity here. And my, I'm, look, I don't, I don't want to even get so graphic because it's... No one should have to stoop that low to make an explanation. Um, I've always gotten incredible feedback about my breasts uh, from men. I've only ever been told that my breasts are perfect um, and they're not perky. So I'm not really bothered by it because I have literally, when I was blacklisted on YouTube, I literally um, seduced my way onto certain panels just by having obviously breasts that people were attracted to. And um, I make no apology for that just because I was at a point in my YouTube career where I had been doxxed and blacklisted and I basically had to get my voice out there and, you know, hey, red pill, I, I, I know my assets and this person trying to put me down for an asset that she believes that she have, it, she believes that hers in comparison are superior. And I'm like, okay, we'll prove it. But you hide behind an avatar and you hide behind, you know, you, like your camera is never open because you're, it's, it's not a safety thing at this point because if the person in the photo is really her, then it's like, okay, well, then we know what you look like. So it's not a safety thing at this point. So many people, people make all kinds of gaslighting excuses about why they come onto YouTube and decide not to open their cameras. And here's the deal. When I look at a YouTuber like Chrissy, I support her for not opening her camera. I really do. I think that it's very important that she stays incognito. However, you have never heard... <laughs> 
And I do mean never. You have never heard Chrissy just go in on the looks of other women, putting them down. And you've never heard that. You've heard Chrissy say, hey, I used to be overweight and I had to lose weight, ladies. We just kind of got to do it. If you want a certain kind of man, this is just the reality. Welcome. You know, this is a red pill reality, ladies. Like she'll give it to you like that. But you've never heard her just go off the deep end about, oh, you big nose B word. And that's why you're dark skinned and you just pretend to be light skinned and you just want to be my color. Like this person said to me about me wanting to be her color and envying her color and and just all kind of colorist clapbacks and so as african-american women it's like when you don't divest from the men who support these women you're always going to catch wind of those women's abuse towards you now, again, this was a channel I had never heard of. I had never, someone sent me the link and I really, um, I really don't like that the person shared the link with me. I'll just be completely honest. I respect the person who sent it, but I would rather have not known because it brought back, you know, some, some unfortunate memories in my YouTube past that I would really just not like, um, not like to remember. But I mean, I think it was um, Trinity Time Travels who posed the, the question about hypocrisy. Like, okay, well, you tell people to cam up, but you've never cammed up yourself. And the person was like, oh, well, you know, all the, all the women, and she did say women, all the women who asked me to cam up, you know, they're hypocrites and they don't cam up themselves. And I'm just like, Celeste did. Verbal did, I did, Trinity did, like, you know, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? There, there are so many of us. And it's not that uh, there's, it's not that what the person looks like is important. It's just in order to be talking about what I look like, you had better look like God is six footer. In order to be putting me down for my looks and making these absolute statements about my physical inferiority, you'd 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 better be, uh, Beyonce, Kelly Rowland, Halle Berry, uh, uh, makeup Shayla, Shira Seven, Crystal and Karazin, like you, you you had better be a beauty up and down like from, from from head to toe because if you're not then there's room for criticism and therein lies the reason why this person will never come up while this person will always hide now I had a woman do this to me before right I had a woman in a hotel marriage agreement who dragged me said that I was built like a pickle and I was fat and ugly and all these different things and I started to cam up. I started to wear short dresses and low cut tops and walk on the treadmill in my home and, and all kinds of things to say, here I am. And you know, this person has never opened their camera. The, the woman would take photos of herself, Photoshop them. And there were people who met her in her real life and dealt with her in her scamming ways and said, hey, I didn't even recognize her because she doesn't look like the photos that she uses, you know, that they're not just filtered, they're photoshopped and, you know, she's had liposuction and she's still a big girl like that should just let you know what she looked like before that. But like these people had so much to say about me. I had a woman, an, another black female YouTuber say something about me along the lines of, oh, she looks like her name could be Griselda. And I'm just like, you look like a cancer patient. You don't have hair. You don't have eyebrows. You don't have eyelashes. And that's fair for me to say, because at least that woman cams up, right? Now, she said these things about me before I had ever gotten on YouTube, right? And there have been a ton of men, not that it really matters, but there have been a ton of men like, yo, you over her any day, you over her any day. Now she doesn't talk about me. Now she doesn't bring me up. But before, during the time where I was being doxxed and blacklisted among all the hard hitting names of black YouTube, it was, oh, she's ugly and crazy. And now she's smart and pretty, isn't she? Mm -hmm. And that's why you're mad. <sighs> And that's why you'll stay mad. 
All right, so that was my response to that because, um, like I said, there's no way my partner was going to have me out there hitting a link at, you know, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. on a co-ed panel. It just, it's not something that he allows me to do, and I respect that as a boundary. There are definitely things I, I, I have boundaries that I want him to respect and things that I wouldn't want him to do, so... If a woman was truly that superior, like if this woman was on the level of goddess six footer, the way that, you know, she claims to be this, you know, or or even what's a woman's name? Dope discussions with Tanika. She's very beautiful as well. If you're really that young, that educated, that feminine, that wonderful to be around, that inspirational, that beautiful, that whatever, like you would not have been single for all these years. Like when I got on YouTube, I was definitely single. And I was strategically single. I kept myself alone and abstinent, as in, you know, no sexual interaction for over a year. Over a year, because I need to exercise, you know, different feelings, go to therapy, you know, get a hold of my body and and, and just really clear myself of of that past relationship before that. That's respectable. But I'm just like... You're this 10 out of 10 out of 10 and not scooped up by anybody. Really? You you want us to believe that? Well, I suppose her followers will because, you know, they're not very bright people. They're very self-hating people. You know, African-Americans struggle from uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome and part of that is vacant esteem. So many black people, as an African-American people, do suffer from low self-esteem, do suffer from the raccoon thing without the raw. And this is what they succumb to. I mean, you see them all the time on, you know, 90 Day Fiance and Married at First Sight, where they're such self-hating colorists and bigoted against their own people struggling with internalized racism that, you know... They try to associate themselves with what they assume is better than themselves. And that is the image that this woman tries to, that that is the illusion that this woman tries to build who attacks African-American women day in and day out. Now, she tells African-American women to come to her channel, but in reality, like, it's not a safe space for African-American women. I mean, all the men in her channel and are there four ninety nine super chats are just like, oh, African American women are bad. African American women are inferior. African American are this and this. And I'm just like, why would we enter into a place like that? Why would any self respecting African American woman enter into a space like that? This is why, like, you know, I I wouldn't call Kevin Samuels even if I was single, even if I didn't have a high value man, if, even if I didn't have a ten thousand dollar ring on my hand, I still wouldn't call because I don't fancy being called names. I don't fancy humiliation, especially if I'm making myself vulnerable enough to seek and submit to advice. That That's incredibly inhumane. People have forgotten that kindness and compassion mean something. They have forgotten that integrity means something. They have forgotten that it's okay to have some inhibitions about yourself and to have some decorum about yourself and to dare to have a few scruples here and there. They, they have forgotten that everybody wants to go viral and find the next greatest insult to hurt somebody with or, you know, push somebody to suicide with. And I'm just like, you know, I'm I'm not here for that. I'm about the love. I'm, I'm about the power of love, the transformative power of kindness. And those situations do make me hostile and I do become aggressive and, um, I just choose not to let something influence me that will influence me in that direction because I want to be good. Everybody has a capacity for good and bad and I'm I'm choosing the good in me. I'm going to give in to the good in me every time and I'm going to set myself up so that is the case. So this is why I did this on my own channel without hitting any link or, you know, respecting my partner enough not to put myself out there like that. But, um... 
I disengaged. I never heard of that channel before. And judging by what was allowed to happen, I will never be back. And I will tell the person who shared the link with me respectfully never to share such a link with me again. Um, because I don't, I don't enjoy watching African-American women be abused for being African-American. It would be one thing if she was just a truly horrible person. I mean, horrible exists in any race. Hypocrite exists in any color. Being hateful comes in all colors, comes in all ethnicities, comes in all, you know, families, tribes, nations. Um, but I'm not, I'm not here for that. So um, I just wanted to make this to get that out as a conversation. Thank you for listening if you made it to this part of the video. Um, I'm not and I'm out of here.